Welcome to this week's piece. Now, this is a little, like, dresser entertainment console kind of doubled situation. It's from an old hotel that had closed down in the area. You can tell it's been in a child's room for an amount of time, and then after that, it was just kind of left out in the shop. So it's not in the best condition. There's not really much I can do with it, except use it as a workbench. Now it has that lovely marble top that's just going to work perfectly for things I need super flat surfaces on, and there's tons of clampable areas. So I'm gonna turn this into a workbench. Now, like I said, it's been sitting out in the shop, so it needs a lot of cleaning. <laughs> Um, I'm starting out with the vacuum just because there was so much dust on it. It's just easier to do it that way. And then I've got a little scraper to take off all of the stickers. And there were a lot. This is not even all of them. <laughs> and I'm not being terribly careful with it because like I said, I'm going to keep it out here. I know that it's going to get damaged. And so if I spend a ton of time on it and really make it pristine and perfect i'm just going to get sad when something inevitably happens to it so in my mind i'm just kind of rolling with the punches and not really caring if things get a little out of hand and not perfect i'm just gonna live with it because i think in the end that will make me happier now that last little trim piece that is there on the top i'm just gonna remove that because it's the only one left <laughs> Um, I did look through the wood pile because I was like, oh, I'll just replace it and it won't be a big deal. But then I'm like, why, why am I going to replace it? It's not necessary. Um, and then I thought, oh, I can do like a stencil around here and I can do all this stuff. And I'm like, why? Because I'm so used to just doing everything to the nines that it's hard sometimes for me to just reel it in. If you know what I mean. Because this has that marble top and it is a mix of particle board and some real wood, very little, but some, it's incredibly heavy. So I'm just going to move it on to my furniture dollies. And then after I had it on there, I'm like, I'm just going to leave it on here. Because if I'm going to be moving it around the shop a lot, it's going to be much easier to have it on wheels. And if I wanted to put casters on it, I'd have to throw in some blocks because the bottom isn't solid. So I was like, I'll just leave it like this. And as for cleaning, this is not Windex. This is a mixture of vinegar, some Dawn, and water. I'm going over the entire piece. There was, I mean, all kinds of stuff on it. So this is just the best way to get it all off and know that it's all off and that my paint's gonna stick. And of course, I gave the entire piece a scuff sand. Again, I wasn't too meticulous about this. I was just going through and giving myself a good surface for paint to adhere. Now for the front, I have an extra sheet of this dark floral decoupage paper. So I'm gonna take my mellow white and throw it on the front three drawers. The paper fits in perfectly there. This is the same paper I did the two little waterfall nightstands that sold really quickly for me. Um, so I'm just using that. And I thought it would be kind of fun to see that you can blend a black paper like that. This is a very dark floral, but it has tons of greens and blues kind of in the mix of things. Um, so this is Goblin Gray. This is one of my most favorite colors in the Chalk Mountain line. It looks a little bit brighter when you put it on, but it deepens up as it dries. But since this is one of my favorite colors, I thought it would be a great happy color for me to see and work around all the time, and I'm going to blend it into the paper. So you can use papers, you know, you kind of want to pick tones out of them to emphasize them or make them look good. I mean, you just kind of pick and choose if you want the paper to stand out or if you want it to blend in or if you want it to do all this stuff. So you can do almost any color, you just have to be able to work it in. 
Now, as you saw in the beginning, I did not have all the hardware for this. I think there was only one actual piece of original hardware. So I'm going to dowel these up. These are just small dowels. They fit exactly in there, throwing glue in them. I will wait till they dry and then use a flush cut saw to bring them back to the surface so that later I can drill in some new holes for new hardware. So while those are drying, I'll go ahead and get started on my second coat. I only need two coats of this. I typically only ever need two coats unless there's something crazy going on. And then I was like, it's time to cut these off. So these were not perfectly dry. I should have waited a little bit longer, but I was impatient. And since I'm going to be putting decoupage paper over the top anyways, I wasn't terribly concerned. Again, this is the I'm not terribly concerned piece. If you've never used one of these saws, they are incredible. I talk about them all the time. Um, I usually have a larger one that folds and I can keep it in my bag if I need to, but this one's great too. To do the flush cut on them, you literally can just bend the saw blade and it puts it flush against the surface and it just does the smoothest cut ever. I love them. So now that the white has fully dried, I'm just gonna figure out where my, where my paper goes. I don't measure, I just kind of eyeball things because that's how I roll. But if you're someone who really likes that accuracy, by all means, throw a measuring tape on there. So for these larger papers, this one is from Zazzle. It is the 18 pound paper, so it's the thicker paper. It's very easy to work with. Um, I will just do a strip of my poly along the top. And this has been the same poly I've been using the last couple things just because I'm trying to use it up and get rid of it. Um, but so I'll just do a strip along the top and that holds the paper there while I can then add more all the way down and throw the paper all the way down and smoosh it down. And again, I'm not worried about bumps and lumps and all that stuff because it's a shop piece. Um, there's tons of ways to get out wrinkles and things like that as you're working with them. You can also know that as they dry, you will lose a lot of them as well, which is kind of great. But there's brayers you can use. You can do the cellophane trick. You can wait till it dries and put a cloth down and then actually iron it smoother to the surface. Um, I almost never do any of those. I'm, I'll either just be more meticulous about putting it down or less meticulous is how I roll. And then this one, I actually left this overnight, which I don't normally do. I'll kind of go through and make sure that I get an extra top coat and do everything while I'm working on it. But I had some place to be, so this had quite a few more bubbles than I would typically like and some other things because I wasn't watching it and making sure that everything was going smoothly. And that's just kind of what happens. But like I said, this one's fine. It'll be okay. So now I'm just adding the layer to the top to really seal it down. Um, this is the triple thick poly, like I said, that I was talking about. I, I did really like it for the napkins because it didn't let the ink bleed off of them. However, I don't love it for this thicker paper because the poly is thick and the paper is thick. So it doesn't like to kind of sink into the paper as well as the thinner satin poly that I use from Chalk Mountain. So that's something to think about. I think it definitely has its place with the thinner, super, super thin napkins and possibly even a thinner tissue paper, but I did not love it for this thicker tissue paper. But that's fine. That's how we learn. Now, this is the next day, so I'm taking a very sharp razor blade and I'm cutting in between all the drawers. Once I get those all cut, I will then take a piece of sandpaper and scrub backwards away from the paper to get a really clean line against all the edges of the drawers. Sometimes I will fold the paper over and seal it in that way, but I just didn't think that it was necessary in this case.
And then I found one large pocket that didn't adhere as well as I would like. So I just went through with some poly and added more up in the little pocket there. Which again is because I left and didn't check everything. So do your due diligence if you want your stuff to work out well. And then I'm just going through with the poly and sealing all of the edges again since we did the cut and sandpapered. I just want to make sure everything is sealed down really, really well. So I'm going to take my blackboard now. Since this paper is mostly dark, mostly blacks around the edges, I'm going to take that and run around the edges of the drawers. And then I will fade out the black with the goblin gray. So it will deepen up the goblin gray even more. And the black is dark, so that will help blend it into the paper. And I'm just going to go back and forth between those two colors and hit all around the edges of the drawers, the tops, the sides, everything, just to make sure everything goes in. And I'm never afraid to go over the top of the paper. That's just how it, it looks like it's more blended in. If you try and keep it just around the edge of the paper, it never looks fully blended. It just kind of looks like a square on your piece of furniture, which is not my favorite thing. But if you actually take the paint into the paper and not in like a straight line, but in waves and just different shapes and everything over the paper, you'll notice that it starts blending in really, really well. Now something to think about with this 18 pound paper, since it's easier to work with because it's thicker, it will also leave a thicker line on your piece of furniture. So you will definitely see the thickness of the paper. The thinner the paper you have, the less of a line that you will have showing around the edges. So it's kind of, you know, you, you pick your battles. For this, I'm mostly doing a stippling technique just to model the colors together. It just really kind of matched the paper's painting style better than just doing brush strokes, if that makes sense. And then I'm going to seal the entire piece with that triple thick poly. Again, this is not my favorite stuff for everything, but I do like it for those napkins. Next, I'm gonna go through and distress this piece. I did a few different ways of distressing so it wouldn't look so sandpaper distressed. Um, so this is called wet distressing. This has already been sealed with poly, but I like just sealed it with poly so it's still very wet. And I just have a wet shop rag and I am, I shouldn't say wet, it's damp. And I'm kind of scrubbing at things to bring back some of the wood. And I want it kind of weird looking because I feel like natural wear always happens strangely and it's not perfect so i didn't like how this one turned out so i'm kind of going over it and doing a bunch of different things to make it something that i'm happy with and then i'll also use sandpaper to go around the edges i don't do them all perfectly i kind of do it just randomly and wherever i want it and bringing back the wood also helps the paper because the paper has a lot of those same colors as the wood has and so it kind of just brings those colors out to the edges of the piece instead of just being in the center. And also, this is staying out in the shop, so it's going to get damaged. I wanted it to be distressed so that I wouldn't be sad if something happened to it. Oh hi, Karen here with Elegant Upgrades and we've got our finished piece! I know we're in a strange location and it is not beautiful, but that is because I am in the shop. My mom and I have spent the last three days cleaning it out. And <laughs> I will tell you, <laughs> I've had very little time to do anything else. So this piece right here is um, from a hotel that went out of business locally. And my parents had picked it up. It's just been sitting in the shop. It was kind of messed up and beat up. But I was like, you know what? It has that perfectly flat surface that you need quite a bit and it has clamping areas on the front and the back. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep this as a workbench. Perfect, perfect use for wooden knobs, which you guys know I'm not the hugest fan of on my furniture because I like things to be a little bit fancier, but it is perfect for say a piece that I will be working on. So 
I wasn't terribly concerned about doing things 100%. I know that it's gonna get jacked up. I know that something bad is going to happen to it just because it's the nature of working in a shop and <laughs> putting tools on things and moving things around. In fact, I kept the furniture dollies underneath this just because it is so incredibly heavy with the marble top and all the fake knot wood. <laughs> so, I mean, I just think this is going to be a really cool functional piece in here and it's pretty to look at, which I love, I love, love, love. So I'll have pretty things in my Portland shop, pretty things in this shop, and I think it's just kind of nice to have something fun to look at while you're working and kind of just makes you happy while you're doing your thing. Um, I will hopefully soon show you a tour of this. It is so, we, we have it not perfect yet. It still needs a little bit more stuff, but it's, it's totally getting there and now it's at least workable. You guys know that I was working outside most of the time, but starting next week, the temperatures are going to drop substantially. As I've said, my parents live in the mountains, so they get snow quite frequently. They get a lot of really cold weather and I can't do that outside. So everything has to be able to get moved in and have it be a workable space. So that's what we've been working on. And let me know if you guys wanna see this, but this back here is going to be my staging wall because it is really hard to um, take everything in the house and stage it up there, where in my shop, I have my staging wall in there. And so I just throw things against the wall, take photos, and then I can put it away. So I kind of want something similar here. And so that's what I'm gonna do with this wall. Um, if you guys wanna see that, I will do an extra video for you. It won't be one of my normal um, Saturday videos, but it'll go up on probably a Tuesday. So if you wanna see a full video of that, I will definitely do one. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna make it into a short because why? I mean, it's just doing a wall, but I have, I think I'm gonna do something cool to it. Anyways, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this, like not quite fully my style. Not everything was repaired. Not everything was perfect but a totally usable piece and something that I still enjoy looking at. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much and I will see you next week.